Good morning and welcome again to Look What God Is Doing. I'm Sister Eleanor Jordan and I do want to remind you that this program is sponsored by the Lamaha Street Fellowship which meets between Camp and Thoma Streets in Lamaha Street. This morning as I sit here I just sense the peace of God. The peace of God. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I want to declare over our nation, Guyana, our beautiful nation, Guyana, I do want to declare that the kingdom of God is come. I want to declare that righteousness is come, that peace is come, that the joy in the Holy Ghost is come. Guyana is transitioning into a season of greatness, into a season where the glory of God fills this earth. Amen. A few weeks ago I began to share on the sons of Belial, the Belial spirit, spirit Belial. I think this was as a result of mentioning that the men in Judges, Judges 19, were, cut, were called sons of Belial, those men who sought to break down the door of that old man and to take his guest, a man, so that they would have carnal knowledge with him. Beloved, there were certain characteristics that I shared about the spirit Belial and one that I said very clearly was that Belial was a spirit. Belial is a spirit that can be either in a male or a female and I referenced 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 12 and 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 16 where Hannah, Eli thought she might have been a daughter of Belial. I mentioned to you that there were 25 references of the word Belial in the Bible. Only one in the New Testament, quite significant, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 15, when Paul asked, what agreement, what concord hath Christ with Belial? What agreement hath Christ with Belial? They are on the two opposite ends. I wouldn't even say of a spectrum. But they are just opposite each other. They are different. They are different. And we ask the question, why would Paul the Apostle make such a contrast between Christ and Belial? What is so specific to Belial? that is in stark contrast to Christ. Of course, Christ speaks of all that God is and his kingdom, his anointing, Christ the head, Christ the body. What are the characteristics of the sons and daughters of Belial? Belial's spirit originates from the negative realm negative spirit realm and actively opposes the purposes of God. Actively, consciously, actively opposes the purposes of God. This is not just being ungodly, but actually being anti-godly, if you want to put it that way. Also, secondly, Belial does not know God. That Hebrew word yada, which means intimate knowledge, is a word used in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 12, and describes the sons of Eli. It says they knew not the Lord, even though they were involved in so much religious activity in the outer court and in the holy place of the tabernacle. In Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 12, 
going right down to 15, we see that Belial worships other gods. Belial is given over to idolatry. But not only is Belial given over to idolatry, but it entices others to get involved, to follow after other gods, other than the true and living God, the only God, Yahweh, who made the universe. Yahweh, Jehovah, Yahweh. Praise the name of the Lord. And God says very clearly that such a spirit must be utterly destroyed. When we, in obedience, utterly destroy that spirit, we cause God to turn from his fierce anger and show mercy and compassion and cause fruitfulness to come. That, I declare, is going to be the experience in this land of Guyana. God will turn his fierce anger from this land. He will show mercy to this land. He will show compassion to this land. And he will cause fruitfulness to abound in this beautiful land of Guyana. Fourthly, I said that Belial is an extremely strong spirit with an apostolic mandate. Just read Judges 20, verse 1 to 48. And you would see the judgment executed against this spirit as mandated from Deuteronomy 13. And you would see that even though God told his people to go up against the spirit on the first and second day, they were not successful. As a matter of fact, a number of the army a number of the soldiers in that army and the host of the Lord were killed. But on the third day, there was victory. And I said to you that there is an anointing that comes on the third day. On the third day. And that is an anointing without measure. And that's an anointing that comes upon a people who have learned and who dwell not just in a casual relationship with the Lord but an extremely intimate relationship with the Lord beholding him face to face and experiencing the Shekinah glory many people say Shekinah glory of God the very light of God as Moses had a relationship with the Lord a face to face relationship that kind of endowment that comes from that face-to-face -face relationship is the kind of anointing that will destroy Belial. So I encourage you. I encourage you out there, brothers and sisters, seek the face of Almighty God and know his glory. For we have in this nation, and not only in this nation, in the Caribbean and in the world, Spirits of Belial arising to oppose the purposes of God. God. But Jesus Christ said, Yeshua said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Belial, point number five. If you turn to 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 27, 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 27 you would see that the children of Belial said of Saul how shall this man save us and they despised him and brought him no gifts but he held his peace Saul the first king chosen in Israel who God anointed it wasn't God's perfect will that Israel should have a king but they wanted one, and God gave them that king in the person of Saul. Belial despises authority. 
They do not honor who God honors. They show no respect. Now you would see me, I was numbering these various characteristics of Belial. And I have a few more to discuss today. But before I do, I do want to say that the combination of characteristics in Belial represents a synergy that is a force to reckon with. What do I mean by synergy? Synergy? The whole is greater than the sum of the parts. You know, if you add one to one to one to one, you should get four. But when you put, when you consider synergy, when there is that synergistic effect, what is manifested when all these characteristics come together would be greater than one plus one plus one plus one equal four. And we call that synergy. When all these characteristics in Belial come together, that spirit Belial is a force to be reckoned with. But I thank God that Jesus Christ, our God in the flesh, Yeshua, he spoilt principalities. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. Jesus Christ, our God, Yeshua, that's what he did. Jehovah, our salvation. So we don't need to fear. We just need to be aware of the characteristics and, and receive the strength of God to appropriate his victory in our everyday lives, in our family lives, in our community lives in our communities, in our fellowships, in our nation, in the world. I want us to examine a story in 1 Samuel chapter 25 where this word and this spirit Belial comes up again. And it's the story of Nabal, which means fool. We will look for at chapter 25 from verse 4. First Samuel 25 verse 4. I want us to look at this and see what we can learn from it. It says David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did share his, his sheep. You know he was taking the wool off of his sheep. And David sent out ten young men and said unto the young men, Get you up to, to Carmel and go to Nabal and greet him in my name. Now, I want you to understand who David was. David was God's anointed. Our Lord, who died on the cross, came from the lineage of David. David was king. David was prophet. David was priest. He experienced and lived a triple anointing. So he said, go to Nabal and greet him in my name. And thus shall you say to him that liveth in prosperity, peace be both to you, peace be to your house, peace be unto all that you have. What a greeting. And now I have heard that, that you have shearers. Now, now that your shepherds, which were with us, we did not hurt. Neither was there anything missing unto them, all the while they were in Carmel. Ask your young men, and they will show you. Wherefore, let the young men find favor in your eyes, for we come in a good day. Give, I pray you, whatever cometh to your hand unto your servants and to your son David. So David was sending his men to Nabal, who was, had his sheep on Carmel and David's men were like a wall of fire were like protection to them it says and when David's young men came and they spoke to Nabal according to all those words in the name of David and ceased Nabal answered David's servants and said who is David and who is the son of Jesse 
There be many servants nowadays that break away from every man, from his master. Shall I take my bread? Shall I take my water and my flesh that I have killed for my shares and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? So here was Nabal saying, who is David? Indeed, David represents represents he's the, he's the ancestor of our lord and nabal is saying who is he how i could take what i have and give it to him so david's young men turned their way and again came and told david all that nabal had said and david said unto his men gird ye on every man his sword and they girded on every man his sword. And David also girded on his sword. And there went up after David 400 men and 200 abode by the stuff. So David is going after Nabal. After Na Basically, he saw it as ingratitude and presumption. Now you may ask, how come David could just ask, a, ask for, for a gift and why his response should be such? But you've got to understand who David represents prophetically in the word of God. No ordinary man. No ordinary man. David said unto his men, get ready for war. Anyway, Abigail, who was Nabal's wife, heard about it. The young men told Abigail and said, behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute her master. But he railed at them. As Guyanese would say, you really carry on on them. He says, but the men were very good unto us. We were not hurt. We didn't miss anything as long as we were conversant with them when we were in the fields. They were a wall unto us by night and day. They were protection. So one of Nabal's own servants is telling Nabal's wife, Abigail, how good David's men were to them. All the while we were with them keeping the sheep, they were a wall to us. That's verse 16. Verse 17. Now therefore know and consider what you will do. For evil is determined against our master, against all his household. Verse 17, the B part. For he is such a son of Belial, that a man cannot speak to him. Very interesting. Another description of the son of Belial. Nabal's own servant is telling Nabal's own wife that Nabal is a son of Belial. He, he doesn't listen to anybody. He's arrogant. He's proud. He's obstinate. He will not listen to wisdom or godly reason. He was opposing David who prophetically spoke of the anointing of the prophet, the priest, and the king. He was an ancestor of our Lord. So Abigail, who was Nabal's wife, she made haste. And she took 200 loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of parched corn, a hundred clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of pigs and laid them on some donkeys. And she said to her servants, go on before me, behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband Nabal. She was going to avert the disaster and the destruction. And it came to pass as she rode on the donkey that she came down by the covert of the hill and behold David and his men came down against her and she met them. So she met David and the men. Now David had said, Surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow hath in the wilderness so that nothing was missed of all that pertained unto him. And he has given me, he has requited me evil for good. So and more also do God unto the enemies of David, if I leave all that pertain to him by morning light. Anyone, and the King James says, piss it, urinates 
I would say, against the wall. David meant to wipe out all the men that belonged to Nabal. Now, Nabal's behavior could have cost not only Nabal his life, but all his male servants. And when Abigail saw David, she hustled, she hasted, and lighted off the ass, and fell before David on her face, and bowed herself to the ground, and fell at his feet, and said, Unto me, my lord, upon me let this iniquity be. And let your handmaid, I pray you, speak in audience, and hear the words of your handmaid. Let not, my lord, I pray you, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal. This is his wife. The servant called him a, a, a man of Belial, and Abigail, his wife, called him a man of Belial. For as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. So Belial is foolish. Folly is with Belial. What kind of folly? A folly that would want to fight God. As if God were just a man? No, it does not make sense. It says, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, your handmaid, saw not the young men of my Lord, whom you sent. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth, and as your soul liveth, seeing the Lord has withhold on you, has stopped you from coming to shed blood, and from avenging yourself with your own hand, now let your enemies, and they that seek evil to my Lord, be as Nabal. But now this blessing which your handmaid and has, has brought unto my Lord, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord. I pray you, forgive the trespass of your handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fights the battles of the Lord, and evil has not been found in you all your days. Yet a man is risen to pursue you and to seek your soul but the soul of my lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the lord your god and the souls of your enemies them shall he sling out as out of the middle of a sling very interesting very interesting very interesting here is abigail intervening so that disaster would not be brought to her family, to the men that work with her husband. David said to Abigail in verse 32, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel who sent you this day to meet me, and blessed be your advice, and blessed be you, you have kept me this day from coming to shed blood and from avenging myself with my own hand. For in very deed, as the Lord God of Israel lives, which has kept me back from hurting you, except you hasted and to come to meet me, there would not have been left any man that was under Nabal. David received the gift from her, and said to her, go up in peace to your house. I have hearkened to your voice. I have accepted your person. Abigail came back to Nabal and he was having a great time in his house. He was having a feast, like the feast of a king. He was really living it up. And Nabal's heart was merry within him. He was drunk. Remember, um, Eli thought that that Hannah might have been drunk and and she said don't think I'm a daughter of Belial well Nabal this time was actually drunk wherefore she told him nothing she didn't tell him what happened less or more until the morning light but it came to pass in the morning 
when the wine was gone out of Nabal and his wife had told him these things that his heart died within him and he became as a stone well what we would say is that he got a heart attack and 10 days after the word of God says in in, in verse 38 of first Samuel chapter 25 it says the Lord smote Nabal and he died the Lord smote Nabal and he died now we don't wrestle against flesh and blood the weapons of our warfare are not carnal beloved these things were written so that we might see what's God's heart and God's prescription and I believe that God has called us to rise up and battle against the spirit of Belial in our families, in our nation, and if they find them in our own lives. For, for if God's kingdom is to be established, there needs to be victory over the spirit Belial. Beloved, we'll continue talking about the spirit Belial. But at this point, I just want to remind you that as the Lamaha Street Fellowship, we have meetings on Sunday from 9 o'clock, prayer, praise, worship, sharing God's word. We also offer a counseling and deliverance ministry. We work by appointment. The numbers to call are 233-6752, 226-9523. I do want to say to us that I continue to make the call for intercessors all over this nation to arise and war for this nation, for what God wants to do. And you want to be part of such intercession and to interact with us. Call the numbers sc scrolling across your stream, uh, scrolling across the screen. And also, you may also call 218-2050 to write to us, write to lwgid at live.com or snail mail. Look what God is doing in care of the Lamaha Street Fellowship, P.O. Box 10755, Georgetown, Guyana. Until next week, the peace of God be with you as you walk in his word and submit to him. God richly bless you. Amen.